Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about credit acceptance. This is a national subprime auto lender uh, that has gotten caught up in a major lawsuit number from the dealers and from consumers. Now, this information I'm gonna share with you is very important, so pay attention. If you, even if you don't have a credit acceptance loan, this information is, if you have a subprime loan or you, have, you feel that something is weird or strange about your auto loan from the dealer, that this could be one of the reasons why, and you could utilize this information to put, potentially get your car refinanced, potentially get a settlement and have your title turned over to you because they don't want to make any waves about this. Listen to this information closely. Some of the times the answer to your problem is with is within other problems that people had with other companies. And you're like, this looks exactly like what I'm going through with the company that I'm dealing with. So let's get right into it. Again, this is from the CFPB. And this was actually the New York State Division. This is where a lot of this is, it, it seems like they're taking the lead on this with credit acceptance. So now, this is, this is what this whole thing is about. 12,000 affiliated used car dealers. So the joint complaint alleges that credit acceptance pushed dealers to sell cars with hidden interest costs surreptitiously included include expensive add-on products with with vehicle sales did you hear that did did you what is, did you see that did you read that did you hear what i just told you that they're actually the lender told the dealer to do this the lender told the dealer to do this why did the lender tell the dealer to do this well i'm gonna buy, i'm about to get to it so the complaint further alleges that credit acceptance applies co complicated algorithms to predict how much it is likely to collect from borrowers to determine how much to offer dealers for each loan resulting in high cost loans with annual percentage rates aprs often exceeding state usury caps remember in the video that i talked about uh that lenders and people were like it's impossible they got lawyers they set up their business all of this stuff why would they break this law like it would be simple this is the interest rate that you could charge in the state and put it on the paper nobody's going to break that rule we have a major corporation credit acceptance this is what the CFPB is saying happened right here. Not come, you know, not something that I'm alleging. This is exactly what they're saying here. That credit acceptance applied a complicated algorithm to predict how much it is likely to collect from borrowers to determine how much to offer dealers for each loan. So to, to, let me just put it in layman's term. You're sitting at the table. They're writing up your loan. You know how they go in the back room and they'll be like, they come back with four different squares. Well, what they were doing is they would plug it in to credit acceptance algorithm, punch it in. It comes back, hey, based off of this, and when they say based off of how much it's likely to collect, when, when lenders make loans, there's this window where they're like, okay, how far out would they be able to predict that potentially, potentially, knowing that this is a subprime uh, uh, borrowing situation before the loan could go bad? Like maybe it would be like six months of good payments and then they miss one and then another two months and then they miss one in another three months, then they miss one in another four months, another six months. Like that's in the algorithm. It's like, hey, you're gonna make this amount of money from this person. So what they were doing to the dealers, they were like, well, you know, the algorithm says, hey, we wanna help you sell this car, but um, we can't give you as much for that one. 
or if you what we'll do is we're it's going to be a higher interest rate so you got to you know write that on that paper and go in there and sell that to the person and what was happening is that they were doing this and they were like we can't go in the room and give them that paper they're not going to sign it so what was happening with some with some and now this is not my words i had a dealer contact me that was in this area in, in i think he said he was in new jersey in the New Jersey area, somewhere over that way, East Coast. And he said that the, the uh, credit acceptance had this little deal where you had to, you weren't even going to get any money until you had a hundred cars sold. And then you would start getting some money on the first group of cars that you sold. So he was like, they scammed us too, not just the people, they scammed us too. So what they were doing though here is they were like, okay, punch it all in. We could give you this amount on this car. We're not going to give you all the money. No, we're not. This is subprime, but we want to help you sell the car. You, you're not going to sell the cars unless you come through us. Who are you going to go to? Who are you going to go to? That, that's what they're doing to the car dealer. And then what is the car dealer doing to you? Well, we, you know, we gave, made, we were able to work out a deal for you. We did you a favor, even though we, we got to use your money for the down payment. We got to use your money for all of the payments, but we're doing you a favor. That's so, so, so the credit acceptance saying, hey, we doing the, the, they're telling the dealer, you know, they got them standing over them. Hey, we're doing a favor for you because you, this car would be sitting on your lot. You wouldn't be able to sell it. So we're going to give you some of the money so you can make the deal go through. You got to wait on the other part of the money. And then on, when when they go into the finance room, they change. And now all of a sudden, they're the big person. They're like, hey, you know, uh, we, we were able to do this deal for you. Here's your payments, which ones you want. And hidden in that, hidden in that, not my words, hidden in that is that they were misrepresenting the true principle, misrepresenting the true interest rate that the individual would have to pay. This is the same thing that happened with Santander. People were paying on their car for five years and they still owe the same amount that they bought the car for. Listen to me. They got the car for $30,000. Paid on the car for five years. After five years, guess how much they owed on the car? They owe $30,000. How do you end up owing $30,000 when you bought the car for $30,000 and you put a down payment on the car, maybe a couple of thousand? How can you owe $30,000? You can owe it because of what happens right here. Go there and read it yourself. The key loan terms, including the true principle, the true principle, a lot of people found out it wasn't $30,000. It could have been $45,000. And then you had a high interest rate. So the true principle, how can they say the true principle? You signed the documents. So how can it not be the true principle? Because they were sending documents <laughs> to the uh, lender that was different than the documents that people had signed. So now the finance charge. Well, you're saying, well, Steve, this finance, they, they said on the truth in lending statement, this is the finance charge. No. Because the truth in lending statement wasn't even signed by you. And even if it was, that was not the one that they gave to the uh, lending company, to credit acceptance. Now, you might be wondering why would credit acceptance even go through with that? These people are not going to be paying on their cars. It's going to be just a wreck, all of that. Because they had their algorithm put together. It states it right there. Their algorithm would predict how much they're likely to collect from borrowers to determine how much they would give the dealer for each loan. Algorithm, the algorithm, the computer, the, the chat G GPT, is that what it's called? The AI said, hey, if you do this, if you make this loan and you go one loan, two loan, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, Bad loan, bad loan, bad loan, bad loan, bad loan, good 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 loan. All of these people ended up paying even more than they should have paid. Within these groups of people, they made enough payments to justify and make our whole business model work. That's what they're doing. That you 
Because if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense. So you look at it right here. So it misrepresented the, the, loan, the key loan terms, the terms that people thought that they had when they agreed to buy in the car, including the true principle. They hid the amount of the vehicle. I, I, you can't make this stuff up. Finance charge. You told me I was paying this rate. The finance charge and the APR. I mean, <laughs> this this is crazy. Like when you when you read this stuff, you're like, how can these companies get away with this? How can they do this? It's because they're making billions of dollars. And what is the fine gonna be? Let me just see. Let's see if it uh, talks about the fine. If they do a fine yet, there's no, well, let's see here. It says complete. So they haven't even resolved this case yet. They haven't even resolved it. This was initial filing date of January 4th, 2023. I've been having my eyes on this for more than a year. So, I mean, so now you don't have a loan with credit acceptance, but you feel that your situation could be something similar to this, or maybe your vehicle was repossessed and you're like, hey, I was in a bad loan situation. I could never afford the vehicle. This, let me bring up some things that happened with the Santander and, some of the, and we just went over the things that happened with this lawsuit here. With Santander, they were doing something called power booking. They were actually doing that on here too, making these expensive add-ons to justify having a higher loan amount. They were also not telling the truth on the loan applications. Now, I don't know if that was happening here, but it would be something that you would be able to challenge or to be able to request so you can review your loan application and your initial credit application that you filled out that had your income, that had your expenses, stuff like that, because Santander got caught uh uh, where they were making change, the dealers were actually making changes on there. Also, get your original contract from the dealer and get your, now we got to get the original from the dealer and now we got to get the original original that was actually turned in to the lender to make sure that nothing was changed on there. Because I'm telling you, if, the, if, if they've already got a deal and they feel like they're going to lose you, what potentially could have happened. I'm not going to say that every dealer would do this, but we saw that it was happening here is that obviously the documents that individuals were signing was not the same documents that were sent to the lender, sent to credit acceptance. And that could actually be happening to you also because there's other companies similar to credit acceptance that are out there making these types of loans. And uh, so th with Santander, they had the power booking. That's where they say oh, you got all of these options and things on the vehicle or add-ons that most of the time aren't even true or not even worth what they're claiming. It could be some type of a paint protection type stuff. Uh, it could be something with the tires. You just never know. That's called power booking. They throw all that stuff on there. Application, original application was modified or it was manipulated in some way. Your original contract with them, your original contract that you kept for yourself, hopefully you got that. And then your uh, thirdly, the original contract that was actually turned in to the lender. You want to see that copy to make sure. And when you look at those copies, you want to look at the interest rate that they actually have. Because it took a long, it took a mathematician to be able to figure out if you pay this for this period of time, my friend, your vehicle is not going to be paid off. You're going to actually owe the same amount that you had for the vehicle. So again, why do they do that? Because the algorithm is stating, one, one, let, let, here, break, let's break this down. That you want to know the, the, the number one thing that the algorithm has in there. The number one thing that's that's mostly in common is it's going to have an answer written in there the likelihood of the individual paying off the loan and i can tell you i'm not this is alleged this is my opinion 
I can tell you that the way that that algorithm was written is that most people were not going to finish paying the loan because it wouldn't make sense. Think about it. Would it make sense to have a whole bunch of people continuing paying on the car and then at the end of their five year or their 36 months or their 60 months, 72 months, whatever amount of months that they're going to pay monthly payments and then they didn't have a vehicle paid off? Would it make sense to have a whole line of people that's going to be like, what the hell is this? I've been paying on this car for five years and I still owe the same amount that I bought it from from you on the lot or somewhere similar to that amount. Does that make sense? So the algorithm is written. It's written. It knows that probably 90% of the people will not finish paying the loan on the ones that they specifically targeted to do this stuff to that they talked about. For the group that they had the problem with Right there, often exceeded the usury caps with uh, regard to borrowing abil uh, uh, borrower's ability to repay while still yielding profits. And what they're saying that they still made money by doing, by breaking that rule. But I want to get to uh, right here. Where were we at? Where were we at? Where were we at? Uh, where they were utilizing the algorithm. So the algorithm, just here, I'll just get, get to. you. The algorithm is written the algorithm is written to determine how much money they're going to make from them. It's not written on how many people are going to pay off their loans. So they're saying that with us understanding and knowing that most people are not going to pay off their loans, how can we craft this AI algorithm to, to spit out yeses, noes, maybes, do this, do that, will offer you this amount of money and you get them to go back in the room and you get them to agree to this, that, that that's what the whole thing was about. It's not about paying off the vehicle. It's not about having, uh, you know, in the, in having a good, uh, outcome other than just getting a vehicle that they probably couldn't afford. That's the outcome for the consumer. But other than that, everything is tilted towards the dealer and the uh, lender. And obviously, even with all of the repossessions, even with all of the people who didn't continue paying, the company was able to make billions of dollars. And in this situation specifically, they actually hurt the dealers and the consumers. All right. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video what that what makes us different so you can see my eight-point validation process and my two-phase settlement process. If you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, your, the number three scores.com. Links are below this video. If you have debt collectors coming after you, grab my statute of limitations letter. That's for debt that they cannot legally collect, and I tell you how to find that. Uh, cease and desist collection activities letter. That's where you challenge them right away before they try to move it to go to court. You can stop them right at that point by knowing what to ask them. And then my debt validation letter where you can go that back and forth where they say, hey, we want to do this or this and that, that. I'll tell you exactly how to answer them back. Grab those letters, links below this video. Make a donation for grabbing those because it can save you time, money, frustration. And just for the simple, the, the, the knowledge that I'm giving you, it's worth making a donation. Thank you for your time. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the creditrepairshop.com.